The Marine Aquarium Conference in North America, better known as MAGNA. Celebrating its 30th year this year, MAGNA stopped in Las Vegas, Nevada, and unlike most Vegas trips, what happened in Vegas did not stay in Vegas. Here's a rundown on what I saw. Aqualuminations, a company known for LED lighting with the Prime, the Hydro 26, and the Hydro 52, but now they're moving into pumps with the Nero. I'm here with Jay. Tell me about this little guy. Okay, well this is uh, the logical next step for the Aqualumination product line. And uh, what we have is the Nero 5. It is a submersible pump okay. with a reverse uh, stator design, so that's how you get this small form factor. Yeah, I don't have that big cone out in the it, front. Exactly, right. I mean, you can see how, how small it yeah, is right there. Big. Yep. Using our driver technology and um, you know some of our design tricks, we're able to get 3,000 gallons per hour. Three, out of this little guy? Out dude. of this little guy, right. So it's, it's DC controllable? Yep, fully DC and comes with the uh, controller, but that also houses the communications hardware, which gives you full programmability out of the box using a smartphone okay. and the My AI app. So Bluetooth to your phone, I can program it, dump it to the pump and it runs. Yeah. I don't need any kind of controller talking exactly. to it. And it really is that simple and what you can do with this is really quite impressive. The more I played with the interface, I realized just how easy it is to use. I easily add in the different modes that I wanted to run, increase, decrease the time, increase, decrease the intensity, save it very easily. I can even set up master and slave relationships. This is all just drag and drop, all done with my finger. No coding, saving it's very easy. Just, it's just, I mean, I'm surprised at how easy this is. It really makes it great. A water pump from a lighting company? I wasn't expecting that one. Then I found something that will make your tank maintenance much easier. Media reactor is one of those tank maintenance things that can get a little hairy when you have to dive into them. A lot of times you've got hoses, connections, you got to take it out of your sump. It can be a real pain in the butt. NIOS is seeking to make that much easier with their torque reactor. Now check this thing out. This thing has a base which the reactor body slides into. So if you want to make a change on the reactor, pop it off the base. You can go clean this, bring it back, and then all you have to do, pop it in and rotate it and you're back in business. It's a nice compact way to have this in your sump and it's modular. It will grow with your tank because we've got three different sizes. We have a small size and a medium and then a larger size for you guys and gals with bigger tanks. Now here's a really fun thing about these mini reactors. So you've got carbon, the GFO, or maybe even bio pellets. You can change out sponges, put floss in here for different media types, and for your DIY types, you could even put a light down in the center to make yourself your own algae reactor. We can vary the flow based on what type of media that you want. You can even have a second one of these on your shelf, ready to go. You take the dirty one, put it in your sink, you grab the clean one, pop it in the base, and you're back in business. It's as easy as that. No hoses, no barbs. One base will stay with you for the life of your tank. As your tanks grow, this grows with you. It's almost too easy. An easy to service media reactor. Yes, please. But what about quickly removing phosphates without the need for a media reactor? There's lots of ways to remove phosphate from your saltwater aquarium, but what do you do when your phosphate levels are too high for your phosphate remover? Well, you turn to a new product from one of the most trusted names in saltwater aquariums, Julian Sprung. What are we looking at with this thing, Julian? Thank you, Mark. So yeah, you were mentioning a phosphate remover. Many people are familiar with Phosban. It's a granular, granular product right. uh, that gets put into a filter. Um, has a high capacity, but when the phosphate level is above, let's say, 0.1, if you're in the 0.5, 1, or 2 part per million range, which happens in a, an aquarium where you've got a lot of fish and you're feeding them very heavily, then use this product, which is Phosban L. L is standing for liquid okay. or also lanthanum. All right. uh, the GFO is based on iron, and it's an iron oxyhydroxide. Okay. Uh, this is lanthanum chloride, 33% uh, solution in water, so it's very concentrated. Hmm. Uh, this is not something that you would just pour <laughs> in the tank. Okay. It's dripped in? Uh, it's dripped in. Okay. You, you take this concentrated solution and you dilute it. Um, and you take the diluted solution and you add it dropwise. So little bitty drops. Little drops. So you can set up a, uh, a dosing system, system that just works with drops or you can use a dosing pump. 
Um, the best way to employ it is with a uh, 5 micron filter sock where water from the tank is flowing through the filter sock and the drops are mm. going in there. Now you might say, why? Well, it's very effective at precipitating phosphate. And okay. when lanthanum phosphate forms, it's a, a milky white uh, precipitate and mm -hmm. that can be irritating to some fishes. So you really don't want to let that escape into the aquarium. And if you trap it in the filter sock, then it's trapped. you've caught the phosphate and the filter sock traps that lanthanum phosphate. But five microns pretty small. Most of us are 200 microns. Correct. Is that going to do anything for you? Yeah, well, you can't run a five micron filter sock you know, continuously. Right. It's going to clog well, up with organic yeah. matter. Sure. So it's when, when you need to drop the phosphate level down, you put a five or a 10 uh, micron filter sock. Uh, so the this five is, will catch it for sure. That's not a continuous strip. Not a continuous strip. Uh, you're able to, to dose this, you know, a couple of times a month as necessary to drop the phosphate uh -huh. level down. Okay. There, after that, then, yeah, once you're at about 0.1 or below 0.1, then the GFO will take you all the way down to where you want to be. So this bottle could last you a long time. Oh, it'll last a long time. This will take a part per million out of 6,000 gallons. Six. And okay. that's a part per million. We're normally dealing with, you know, fractions, fractions of Fractions of that. Yeah. Okay, so we don't have to use it all the time. It's highly effective when it works. Correct. Use it with the filter sock. Yes. And then we can go back to using GFO. Correct. Could this be something that when you see your phosphate is too high, you don't necessarily have to take off your GFO, just right. drip this little bit, get it, and then let the GFO take that's back That's right. Off. That's right. Julian, you're always thinking of something. This is going to make those with hey. the high nutrient tanks a lot easier. Yes. Certainly with that phosphate battle. Yeah, this, th that kind of product has been used, especially in public aquariums. I would think. And so, and there are some people who've had it in, in the industry. I wouldn't, it's not something that I've invented. <laughs> okay. But, uh, you know, we brought a very high concentration, very pure, good quality product, and with an instructions that I think make it uh, safe and bulletproof, easy to, to dose. Well, thanks for making it safe thanks. and easy for people. Thank I you. use your stuff, I believe in your products. Thanks for that. I'll, uh, I'll keep it in mind for some high nutrient tanks that I have out there. All right.